evening and a welcome to Staff Gymnasium on the campus of Brockton High School in the City of Champions for the BCA Sports presentation of Brockton Lady Boxers basketball tonight. The Lady Boxers with a record of nine wins and seven losses. Welcome in the Sabus Bulldogs who enter with an impressive record of 19 wins and just one lone loss on the season. My name is Peter Zimbor. I'll have the call of tonight's action alongside my broadcast partner, Mark Asselon. Mark, Brockton in rather tough tonight on senior night, their last regular season home game of the year. And since they won't have home court advantage in the postseason, it will be their final home game of the season regardless. And this is going to mean a lot for those four seniors who are playing their last game on this um, court that they've been playing in since their freshman year. So it's going to be a very emotional game for them tonight and we'll see how they do. Starting five for the Lady Boxers tonight. Tatiana Diaz, number 22, number 11, Chanel Melton, number 23, Chantel Jordan, number 33, Christian McDuffie, and number four, Giannisha Silva Moore. Starting five for the Sabres Bulldogs, number 20, Kelsey Jacobs, number 54, Cheyenne Wellington, number 24, Jenea Sanchez, number 11, Madison Sinkfield, and number five, Jasmine Collins. And tonight's game is going to be very different for the Lady Boxers because, you know, they're playing a very talented team. This is a team with only one loss. So it's going to, the Lady Boxers are going to have to play really good basketball tonight in order to, um, to come out on top tonight. Seven thirty-four in the first quarter. Rocking up 2-0 over um, Savage. So Brockton draws first blood. Number 24, Sanchez with the ball. Gets it over to number 11, Sinkfield. Brockton really having to be on their A game tonight. Sabus International, the Bulldogs, come to us from Springfield, Massachusetts, as number five for the Bulldogs, Jasmine Collins, lays it in for two, tying the score with seven minutes to go in the opening quarter. Sabus, a school out of Springfield, Massachusetts, home of the Pro Basketball Hall of Fame. And, the, and those girls from um, Sabres, they had a long drive coming down here tonight. So, you know, they're they coming business because they know they didn't come down, uh, up here for no reason. They told me it was about a 90-minute ride from Springfield to Brockton this afternoon. Springfield borders Connecticut, just to give our fans at home some geography on where exactly it is. Not just a... Easy ride down 24 like some of the teams Brockton plays. And, for, and most teams usually when they make those long drive home, because they know they made that long drive, they had a chance to you know, weld on the game and to focus on the game. Usually that helps them on the court, and we'll see if that's the same case for this um, Savers team for tonight. And depending on the result, it could be a joyous ride home or a long silence ride home as we have a foul called against Brockton's number 23, Chantel Jordan. This is going to allow number five, Jasmine Collins, to head to the free throw line with a score tied at two, 6.33 left to go here in the first quarter. And what a lot of people doesn't know, um, Springfield, some people, they, when they hear the, um, Springfield, they think it's all cornfield, Western Massachusetts. Springfield actually is a is a very, you know, suburban town with, I mean, a very rural town with a lot of, it's a city town. actually. Yes, yeah, it's a city. It's a city. <laughs> Collins lays it in. 4-2 is your score. Bulldogs on top. 6-0-4 left to go in the opening quarter. The last time I was in Springfield, Massachusetts, how's this, Mark? I was hanging out with Rodney King. Uh -huh. I bumped into Jason Vega and Artie Diaz from Brockton in the Woo! elevator who was staying there while they were playing for Northeastern's well, football program. Uh -huh. They were playing a team in Springfield. And then later that night, I bumped into former Celtic D. Brown in the lobby. So, what hotel were you staying in? I can't think of what hotel it was in Springfield. Right. I want to say it was a chain hotel, but it was a really nice one. It's a very small world, like they say. And the Springfield team, you know, even though it's a 90 minute drive away, they brought a big crowd with them tonight.
I remember asking Dee Brown in the lobby, I'm like, what are you doing here? <laughs> he said, I'm coaching an NBA D League team out of Springfield. I said, oh, that makes sense. Yeah, basketball is very big over there. Springfield, the Basketball Hall of Fame, well, of course it would be. It's where the sport was invented. It's like with football, a lot of teams um, that are good are from Ohio. Oh, Ohio lot of great, has a great football program over there. A lot of great high school talent comes out of Ohio that permeates the college landscape and then into the pros. So it, may, it will only make sense that the whole those Springfield team will be good at basketball. Charles Woodson and Desmond Howard come to mind. Desmond Howard was a Super Bowl MVP. Charles Woodson, I think a defensive MVP before. Maybe a shot clock violation here against Savis. Catch the ball! Catch the ball! And Brockton with a 9-7 record. Tonight, you know, they really have to win because they need 10 wins to make it into a tournament. So, actually, this is win or go home for the Lady Boxers tonight. And we're going to have a foul called against Sabus. Senior night here at Staff Gymnasium. A lot going on for those Lady Boxers. Senior night, um, tournament qualification game. It's a lot to handle, a lot of pressure. level tonight's you know, it's pretty high tonight. And we have a timeout called by Sabus. Four minutes, 27 seconds left to go in the first quarter. Sabus leads Brockton by a score of four to three. Brockton taking this opportunity to talk things over with their players. Head coach April Dingwell, her assistant Stephanie Savitz and David Ray. Sabus Bulldogs doing the same. Their head coach is Tom Campania. His assistants Walter LaShore and Tyrone Reed. And last year, the boys' basketball team, when they made it to the um, state championship, they actually lost to also a Springfield team in the state championship. Chanel Melton with the steal. Puts that off the glass and in Brockton retakes the lead. Five to four is your score. Four minutes to go in the opening quarter. And so far, both teams doing a good job. You know, it's a very tight game. And both teams are very focused, playing smart basketball. It's good to see Christian McDuffie back in the starting lineup for tonight for the Lady Boxers. You know, after her injury, she, you know, it took her a while to get back in the starting lineup, but it's good to see her tonight. McDuffie with the ball right now for Brockton. And she is clearly bumped by a Sabus player. 
And she'll head to the free throw line. That's called against number 54, Cheyenne Wellington. And until her, until the, uh, until the, t the time of her injury, um, Christian McDuffie was having a pretty good season. McDuffie from the outside with a three-pointer. Brockton leads eight to four. Three twenty-nine left to go in the first quarter. Chanel Melton with the short jumper from the inside. Brockton leads 10 to four with 2.58 left to go in the first quarter. You know, one of Brockton's better performances this year was against Whittier High School. That was a team that entered with just one loss. Brockton was dominant in that game. They're having an excellent first quarter against the one loss Sabres Bulldogs. And also the Lady Boxers, a win tonight will really mean a lot to them because knowing that you beat a team that has a really good record right before you enter the tournament, it'll be a good, I mean, a confident boost right before you go into the, um, to go into the tournament with for winning versus a very good team. Tatiana Diaz playing some good defense right now. And the crowd really getting into it for the late boxes. Rocking with the eight point edge now, 12 4. 2 34 left to go in the first quarter. And Peter, in any sport, turnovers is always the deciding factor in the outcome of the game. And right now, the Lady Boxers are forcing turnovers, and they're capitalizing off those turnovers. So that's, you know, it's always a good, good thing to be doing those things. Chantel Jordan with the jumper from the inside. 14-6, your score Brockton on top, 209 left to go in the first quarter. Crowded Staff Gymnasium knows the significance of this game, Mark. And most important is the players, you know, even in school to, to, today, I had a chance to talk with some of the players from the Lady Boxers and all of them, you know, you, they was already focused right before the game. And right now, you know, it's paying off with Tatiana Diaz when she hit, uh, she, she also hit that three and, you know, all that um, hard work and focus, this um, is, all, is also paying off right now. Who would have thought that with a minute 48 left to go in the first quarter, Brockton would be up by 11 points. 17-6 is your score. Head coach Tom Champagna really has to get his team under control for the Sabres Bulldogs. Yeah, and the boxers are very playing with a lot of emotion tonight also. That also is playing a factor in the reason why they, they're having such a pretty good first quarter right now. And Peter, you know what else I love with this Lady Boxer team is the energy that the bench brings to the players. Because, you know, a lot of teams, especially in high school sport, a lot of the players are on the bench. Just because they're not starting, they're like, hey, what the heck, what am I here for? You know, let me just sit here and they get to walk in the park sitting on the bench. But, you know, those Lady Boxer, uh, the girls are on the bench, they're always, you know, cheering on their players. And I'm telling you, as, also, as a um, student athlete at the high school level also, hearing your own teammates, the younger guys that are watching you, cheering you on, it also affects the way you play. Chantel Jordan with the takeaway. Stops, pops, in and out, no good. And it was attempted to be rebounded by Sabus, but she stepped in the line, Brockton ball. One minute, 30 seconds left to go in the first quarter. Tatiana Diaz taking a bit of a breather as Christian McDuffie checks back into the game. Struber with the jumper for Sabus, no good, rebounded by Brockton.
this first quarter performance by the Lady Boxers tonight is the best I've seen from them so far this season. That was um, smart thing by Sean Melton to um, to force the um, the Woodier player to us uh, Woodier I'm confusing those two teams the Savers player to force that ball out of bounds. Chantel Jordan with the three at the buzzer, and Brockton finishes off a dominant first quarter where they lead 20 to six. And the difference in that first quarter has been the boxers' ability to capitalize off the turnovers and forcing those turnovers also. You know, ladies, boxers, you know, I was, you know, they have about what, five, six, seven turnovers already so far in this game, and they have capitalized in every single one of them, and that's, that's the deciding factor right now in, from this first quarter. Brockton holds the Sabres Bulldogs to just six points in the first quarter. Who would have thought that coming in with the records that you see on paper? 19 and one against nine and seven. Maybe the opposition isn't quite as stern in Western Mass. That, that also, me as a student athlete, I've always felt that also, even with football. You know, when we go to teams like Lemonster and um, for instance, St. John Shrewsbury over on the Western side and Fitchburg, you always see the difference. You know, first of all, the athletes are small over there, and they're not used to it. Because I feel like most of the talent comes from the South Shore in Massachusetts. But yet again, this is a four-quarter game. It's just three more quarters to go. Plenty of basketball left to be played, but Brock and looking good through one. Tatiana Diaz with the ball. Gets it over to Giannisha Silva Moore to Chantel Jordan. Back to Diaz. That defense exhibited by the Bulldogs in the early portions of the second quarter. Diaz puts it up no good. And Brockton comes down with the rebound. Lose it out of bounds off of Sabus. Brockton ball. I'm loving the energy level by the Lady Boxers right now tonight. Tatiana D is playing a little bit of too much of a defense there, um, um, drawing the, um, forcing the foul. 
Sassiano Diaz with the ball for Brockton. And they're going to call it for a double dribble. Well, unless the ref is seeing something we're not seeing here. Yeah, I did not I didn't see a see double dribble all. right here. I said it with almost a question mark at the end. First bucket of the second quarter for the Bulldogs' Jasmine Collins. 20 to 8 Brockton on top, 6.33 left to go in the first half. Still stolen by Sabus. Bulldogs trying to get into double digits for the first time in this game. And they'll do just that as Collins lays it in. 20 to 10 Brockton on top, 6.18 to go in the first half. And we have a timeout called by Brockton. A great job calling that time out by Coach Daniel because, you know, as a coach, you don't want your team to get too sloppy. And right now, the late boxers, right off the bat, um, gave up two turnovers. So it's a good time, time out to call to regroup your team to make sure, you know, they calm down and, you know, keep and do not over panic. Six minutes, 18 seconds left to go in the first half. Brockton leads Sabus by a score of 20 to 10. This boxers, lady boxer team, is a well-conditioned team because you know, every day at practice, you know, the girls are always complain about it. Coach Nagel always runs them a lot. And right now, for a game with a lot of intensity like this game, this is a game where this will pay off to make sure that your starters and everybody, you know, their stamina is keeping them up so they can play you know, a long, a, a long time um, in a game that counts as much as tonight's game count. Lady boxers have to make sure they keep the momentum on their side right now in the second quarter because, you know, with uh, sports and especially basketball, <laughs> you know, the score in a blink of an eye could really change. Brockton has not scored yet here in the second quarter, but that soon can change as Giannisha Silvermore steals the ball off the glass and in. 22-10 Brockton on top. Three-pointer by the Bulldogs, Janaya Sanchez. 22-13, Brockton with the lead. Tatiana Diaz with the ball. To Silva Moore. Puts it up. In and out, no good. Rebounded by the Bulldogs. Diaz tries to steal it, does. Keeps it in bounds into the hands of the Bulldogs. That was a great effort by um, Diaz to keep that ball in bound. Dominic Cooley checking into the game for the Lady Boxers tonight. And Cooley, who's a three-sport uh, varsity athlete for the uh, for this high school, you know, she plays on the varsity volleyball team in the fall, obviously in the varsity basketball team in the winter time, and also plays for the, um, the, the track team also. And she's, she's successful at all three sports. 
See, Peter, you see what I was telling you about the fact that the lady boxers are well conditioned. So if you look at Savis right now, so you can see it's a lot of the girls are starting to have this fatigue look in their face. It's always as a um, as an athlete, whenever you see an opponent having this fatigue look in their face, it's a sign of weakness that you always use to your advantage. So that's why it's always good, you know. Even though most at, uh, most athletes don't like it when their coach conditions them, but it always ends up paying off in those very competitive games. Jump ball call inside the paint. Possession arrow points in favor of the Bulldogs. So foul called against Silva Moore. This is going to allow number five, Jasmine Collins, to head to the free throw line for the Sabres Bulldogs. Janelle Melton, excuse me, with the jumper. 24-13, Brockton on top. Sabres tries to answer back with the jump of their own. No good, Melton with the rebound. Melton tries to dish it over to Jordan, does just that. Jordan to Giannisha Silva Moore. Lose the basketball on the floor, and a jump ball is going to be called. Possession arrow this time on points in favor of Brockton. 24-13, Brockton on top. 2.35 to go in the half. Peter, so far this, you know, this game hasn't really fooled me. I honestly didn't think the Lady Boxers, you know, was going, you know, have that much of a success tonight, and they've really surprised me. Aaliyah 
Brito checking into the game for the Lady Boxers right now. Aaliyah, who's only a sophomore, and you know, so far is having a great season for the Lady Boxers. Great job, you know, by Snow Melton keeping her body vertical so she could draw that charge. That, that was a great um, job defensively by Snow Melton. I always think it's something that's unfair in basketball the fact that the defender could just stand there straight. As long as they don't do anything, it is is called a charge. I've always think that's something that wasn't fair. There's a lot of calls in basketball that are subjective. So foul called against Sabus's Chelson Ako Brow. Silver Morth, the free throw line, misses his first attempt. Uh, as Casey Thurber checks in for Ako Brow for the Bulldogs. Five thirteen, Brockton. Bulldogs with the ball. Three point attempt by Sabus, no good. They get the rebound, puts it up, no good. Ball out of bounds, Brockton ball. Jasmine Collins lays it off the glass and in 25 15 boxes on top by 10. Under 50 seconds to go in the first half. And all alone is Collins for Sabis, and she makes this a single digit game 25 17 as the Bulldogs are closing the gap here towards the tail end of the opening half of play. And that's going to be a foul against the Bulldogs, number 24. Janaya Sanchez, and with Brockton in the bonus, Chantel Jordan will head to the free throw line.
One's all alone, off the glass and in. And this is a seven point game with seven seconds left. And the first half comes to a conclusion. Brockton with the lead, 26 to 19. So Brockton with a seven point edge at halftime. Excellent opening quarter for Brockton, but they're significantly outscored in the second quarter by the Bulldogs. Nevertheless, they do hold the lead at the half, 26 to 19. You're watching BCA Sports, Peter Zimbor, Mark Aslan courtside. We'll step aside for a quick breather. Second half action after this. Hi, I'm Attorney General Martha Coakley. Our office can be a resource for residents across the Commonwealth on a variety of issues, from consumer complaints to wage and hour violations to information on identity theft, home foreclosures, and energy costs. We also have regional offices throughout the state. For more information, visit our website at mass.gov backslash AGO or call us at 617-727-8400. You want them to get injured. Oh, a shot at the New Orleans Saints. <laughs> Don't think there's any bouncy kid going on here at high school girls basketball. While we've got an opportunity, to remind the folks at home that this Sunday, February the 17th, if you want to head to Messiah Baptist Church, 80 Legion Parkway in Brockton, BCA's own Nubi Rateau will be holding a screening of his award-winning documentary, Step Up, a documentary on fatherhood. That is this Sunday, doors at 3 p.m. at Messiah Baptist Church, 80 Legion Parkway, Brockton. <laughs> Gives a respectful applause to Cheyenne Wellington as she makes her way to her feet and she'll be soon walking off the floor. Hopefully it's just a migraine, it's not anything serious, has a concussion or anything. Chantel Jordan with the jumper from inside the perimeter. Brockton with the first bucket of the second half. 28-19, boxers on top. Wasn't she in the act of shooting when that foul was? was um... Oh, she'll be inbounding from down low. Well, the referees say no. And that is number five, Jasmine Collins, off the glass and in. 28-21, Brockton on top by seven. Tatiana Diaz with the ball. Tries to dish it over to McDuffie. She gets called for traveling. Collins again. Well, the lady boxers, they really got to wake up right now, you know, make sure they keep the momentum on their side and not let the momentum shift to the to, um, Savers' side.
Brockton still up by four. Sabus with the ball, stopping and popping. And connecting is number 20, Kelsey Jacobs. Two point game, 28 26. The gap has been closing ever since the tail end of the first half. And we're going to have a foul called against Sabus. And I guess Brockton's going to take this one out from underneath, as Chanel Melton was not in the act of shooting. It's very crucial for the lady boxers to not panic right now because the thing is when you when you start to lose that lead and you start to panic, then you start playing, you, you start doing certain stuff like turning the ball over, um, having unnecessary fouls. So it's very important for the lady boxers to remain calm right now. Come on, come on, come on. That was a good timeout call by Coach Dango to calm her team down to get them to regroup and get ready. But great job by the, the Savers team. To, to make a comeback, a team that was down by up to 15 points earlier in the first quarter, and right now they, um, they brought down this game to a tie game. Five minutes, four seconds left to go in the third quarter. We're tied at 28 between Brockton and Sabus. You're watching BCA Sports. So I just found out during halftime, Mark, that a video I put up on YouTube just a few days ago is has reached one million views tonight. Yeah, and, you know, it's always a big. Game. I could not believe that. <laughs> um, it was at 5,000 this morning. Now it's hey, at a million? Hey, who knows? You might become one of them, you know. And Tosh.0 apparently is calling. They want to give this girl a web redemption. Oh, okay. I, I'm, I'm astonished. Hey, you know, before you know. This is what know, I found out during halftime. Bef bef before, before you know it, you know, you don't have to be with me anymore. You're going to be in California, huh? <laughs> this was a video that I took of an MMA event, and the girl holding up the round card thought the fight was entering round two, but a guy was unconscious, so she walked over him, and I just found out it approached a million on YouTube tonight. <laughs> also, Maddie. Come on, Maddie. Well, congratulations. I was wondering why my phone was going off the hook during the first half. Maddie from the other side. We were trending number one worldwide on Yahoo over the meteorite explosion in Russia and that psycho killer in Los Angeles. Okay. That's news, folks. That's news. <laughs> And for the first time since the early portions of this game, Sabus has the lead, 30 to 28. Challenge! Challenge it! Chantel Jordan for three, no good. Rebounded by Sabus, and we're gonna have a traveling call against the Bulldogs, turns it over to Brockton. 
Tom Pankegna, not happy with that call for the Bulldogs. 4.06 left to go in the third quarter. The lead box has really got to turn things around here to reclaim the lead. Um, as we said before, the, for the viewers at home, the Lady Boxers need to come up with a win tonight to go, um, advance into the um, playoff tournament. And Christian McDuffie just tied the game. Great job by Shooter and drawing the foul again by Chantel Jordan. And Chantel Jordan also, who doesn't only play basketball, believe it or not, Peter, she also does mixed martial arts. We talked about that in the previous broadcast. And she's really good at it. <laughs> Don't mess with her, she'll break your arm. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie, I'm, I'm kind of scared of her. <laughs> 3.39 to go in the third quarter and Brockton up by three, 33-30. Make sure get, maybe you should get her in your um, next boxing event. Perhaps. So we have a timeout called. Three minutes and 22 seconds left in the third quarter. Brockton up by three. 33 to 30 is your score. Peter Zimmer and Mark Assel on courtside. This game between the Brockton Boxers and the Savas Bulldogs. And Brockton with a record of nine and seven has led most of the way against the 19 and one Savas Bulldogs. Savas, you would have thought would be heavily favored just looking at the team's two records on paper, but Brockton has given them all they can handle and then a lot more here tonight at Snap Gymnasium. And Peter, when I walked in tonight, you know, I heard um, Newbie first thing he told me. He told me they had a 19 and one record, and I looked at the team. I honestly thought, you know, the, the, I didn't think the Lady Boxers was gonna have a chance so far in this game. And so far, those Lady Boxers have, you know, um, proved me wrong. Significant game for the Lady Boxers. Their final home game of the year as they are trying to buy for a spot in the MIAA postseason. And also as a senior, you always want to come out for a win on your last game at home. So luckily for me this season, you know, um, against Bridgewater, I, I had a chance to walk off Rocky Marciano Stadium for a win. And I'm sure it's going to be mean a, lot, mean a lot for those lady boxers to walk off Stab Gymnasium tonight with a win. Silva Moore from the outside, no good. McDuffie with the rebound in the hands of Chantel Jordan. Brockton leads 35-30. Jordan's having a really good game tonight.
Chanel Melton with the ball for Brockton to the outside. That's Jordan, no good. Rebounded by Sabus. 2.15 left to go here in the third quarter. Brockton on top, 35-32. Sabus trying to tie the score, and no good. Sabus the rebound, however, puts it up, no good. McDuffie with the rebound for Brockton over to Tatiana Diaz. Jordan with the short jumper, no good. Brockton able to get plenty of second chance opportunities, however, and we've got a whistle. And that's gonna be against Sabus, Jasmine Collins. And head coach Tom Campagna tells the referee that that was an awful series of calls and the bench for Sabus is warned. So perhaps on the verge of a technical. Collins lays it in, so Sabus within one, 35-34. A lot of bodies have been falling on the court tonight. Tatiana Diaz, pickpocket Sabus, lays it in, draws the foul and one. Diaz playing very good defense tonight. You know, her, her self, I'm, you know, if I'm not mistaken, she has six or seven turnovers herself tonight. And, you know, right now she, with this turnover, she capitalized and draw the foul with a chance to make, um, to get, make a three-point play out of this. Six point lead for Brockton, 40 to 34 with just over a minute to go in the third. That was a beautiful move by the Sabres player. Uh, it's a shame that this ain't going. Oh, come on, come on, we talked about that. Three-pointer by Giannisha Silvermore. At least I thought it was, nothing on the scoreboard yet. Oh, there we go, 43-34 Brockton. 28 seconds to go in the third quarter. Brockton finishing off the third quarter very strong. Chanel Melton with the rebound for Brockton. And as a, you always want the momentum to be um, leaning towards your side going into the fourth quarter. Silvermore with another three, 46-34, Brockton up by 12. Third quarter coming to a conclusion. And as the buzzer sounds, Brockton with a 12-point lead. The crowd in Staff Gymnasium is going crazy. Brockton with tons of momentum on their side. I haven't seen a crowd as ecstatic as this crowd um, tonight ever since um, that Brockton boys the Bedford game. And that's the most exciting I've seen a crowd so far from the um, Lady Boxers tonight. Still eight minutes of basketball left to be played. If Brockton can keep up this momentum, it will be very difficult for Sabus to keep up, and a massive upset will have taken place here at Staff Gymnasium. It's a good thing that the boxers have the momentum shifted on their side going into the fourth quarter. You know, you got the crowd going in for you, and you know, all the advantage are leaning towards the lady boxers right now going into this fourth quarter.
Peter, is it me or is the boxers in the bonus right now? On the near side of that character. Yes, they are. So right now, you know, that's that's also an advantage for the lady boxers going into the fourth quarter. The fact that they're in the bonus, you know, any fouls that they draw, that's two free points right there. Potentially seven minutes and 45 seconds to go in the game. Brockton leads 46-34. Lays it in 10 point game, Brockton up 46 36. And it looks like Chanel Melton is holding her right leg and is not getting up. You know, earlier I seen Chanel Melton getting stretched by um, the trainer Jerry, and obviously it um, looks like her calf is cramping right now. It's always important to stay hydrated in one of those uh, certain type of games. And the Lady Boxers really, um, So we have a bit of a timeout here. Six minutes and 57 seconds left to go in the game. Brockton leads Sabus by a score of 46 to 36. As Chanel Melton makes her way to her feet, the crowd gives her a round of applause and she's gonna hobble off the floor if she can. Yeah, those cramps are never fun, you know. When they catch you, it's a very acute pain. cramps is all that it is. So this game will resume. Six minutes and 57 seconds left to go. And Tatiana, uh, I said, uh, yeah, Tatiana Diaz also needing some assistance on the sideline. Um, her also uh, has a cut on her lower right knee. So I believe she's gonna take a breather. There's six people on the court, so she is gonna take a breather. We already got five on the floor. And the athletic trainer Jerry's another at, um, end of the court stretching um, Snow Melton out. So hopefully they can get somebody to nurse um, Tatiana Diaz's um, entry for her. Collins lays it in for Sabah. Single digit game again, 46 38. Brock with the lead, 6.43 to go. Chantel Jordan with the basketball over to McDuffie. And was, we've got a timeout called by the Brockton bench. And that was a smart timeout called by um, Coach Dangwell because you, know, you got two of your players missing right now with injury. And, you, you know, the new players you have in, in the game, you don't want them to be overwhelmed by the game right now. It's a good, um, good timeout to slow the game down. Those small cuts and bruises like, like the one Tatiana Diaz have, you know, when you're in the game, you know, because so much adrenaline rush going through your body, you don't really feel that those, um, you don't really feel those cuts. It's later on that night when you're going to take a shower and you feel those cuts and bruises on you, that's when they start to burn a little bit. So 6.39 left to go in the game. Diaz with the ball for Brockton. 
And Diaz gets called for traveling. Turns the ball over to Sabis. And they're gonna stop the action as there's a shot clock or a clock malfunction. And Tatiana Diaz is going to have to come off the floor again as her Band-Aid fell off her knee. Nadia, freshman, checks into the game for the Lady Boxers. And that bonus comes into play as Genesha Silva Moore is the line. Nothing comes out of it, however, point wise for Brockton. Chantel Jordan inside the perimeter, tosses it up, no good. Rebounded by Brockton, that was Dominique Coley, and that's blocked by Sabas. Rocking with the ball is Giannisha Silva Moore. And she'll draw the foul, she'll be heading to the free throw line to shoot two.
still the same as Bulldogs call a timeout. Four minutes and 21 seconds left to go in the game. And with Brockton at the free throw line, they lead 47 to 38. Peter Zimbor and Mark Asselon here courtside. You know, hopefully the Lady Boxers could hang on right now, even due to the injuries they have. I mean, not serious injuries, but they got a couple players that are out in the game. Hopefully the players that are in the game right now could hang on, keep hold of that lead. And, you know, the fact that they're in the bonus also will also be a helping uh, factor in this game right now. Silvermore's second free throw attempt is good as we break from the timeout. 48-38, Brockton leads by 10. Just over four minutes to go here in the game. Save us Bulldogs trying to avoid that long, silent trip home to Springfield that we discussed earlier in the broadcast, Mark. <laughs> That's always the thing about those long drive home. Three-pointer by the Bulldogs. That's number 24. Jenea Sanchez, 48-41, Brockton leads by seven. Chantel Jordan down low, and that's good defense exhibited by number 52, Casey Thurber, for the Bulldogs. Casey, who's a you know, very tall girl down low. For Coming down the cut! Save this Coming team. down the cut! Sanchez again, a five-point game. Brockton leads 48-43, 3.15 to go in the game. McDuffie loses it. Good defense exhibited by the Bulldogs. They come up with the basketball. Chanel Melton back on the bench. Perhaps she'll be making her way back into this game again soon. And foul called against Brockton. We're going to see Janaya Sanchez head to the free throw line for Sabus. That's going to be against Dominique Coley for Brockton. And that's her fifth foul of the game, so she will foul out of this contest. And to replace her, it'll be Chanel Melton. Melton checking back into the game for the Lady Boxers. Four point game with 305 left on the floor.
Madison Sinkfield makes it a one point game down low. 48-47 Brockton on top, 2.35 to go in the game. Tatiana Diaz with the ball. This could come down to the last possession. Diaz to McDuffie. McDuffie out to Jordan for three. On the line, that would have been two. No good, rebounded by Sabus. They're looking to take the lead late in this game. And they do just that. Jasmine Collins off the glass and in. 49-48, Sabus on top. 2.13 left to go in the game. Jordan with the jumper from inside the perimeter. Connects, Brockton reclaims the lead by 150-49. Back and forth, back and forth. Traveling called against Sabus and it'll be Brockton ball with two minutes flat to go in the game and the Brockton bench elects to call a timeout. Two minutes to go, Brockton with the one point edge, 50 to 49. Great job by both teams so far tonight. You know, great job by the Sabres team. You know, every time they're down, you know, they still come back to, um, to get themselves back into the contest. And so far this game have been pretty close. And I mean, both these teams, you know, talently, they kind of, they, you know, they, they're even to each other. The assistant coach for Sabus thinks he knows you, Mark. Um, uh, Says you look very familiar. <laughs> Probably knows you from football. <laughs> Less than two minutes ago, Brockton up by 150 to 49. Tatiana Diaz with the ball for the Lady Boxers. Over to McDuffie. Thurber gives Sabus the one point edge again. 51-50, 129 left to go in the game. Diaz launches it up, no good. Rebounded by the Bulldogs. Diaz with the ball for Brockton. Puts it up and in, Brockton reclaims the lead. 52-51, 105 left to go in the game. Back and forth, back and forth, here in the latter part of the game, Mark. And this game is really coming, like you said, it might come down to the last basket. And again, Thurber with the lay and down low. That gives Sabus the one point edge again. Thurber coming up big in the final minute and a half of this game. Brockton down by one, 53-52, the Bulldogs on top. Diaz with the ball. Down low to Melton, one bucket off the glass and in, one bounce off the glass and in, Brockton with the one point lead in. Melton draws the foul, she'll be head to the free throw line, 37.7 seconds to go. In this game, you know, like you said, Peter, from the beginning, the, you know, this fourth quarter is getting really exciting right now, and it's down to who's gonna have the ball last at the end of the game. 54 to 53, Brockton with the lead. 37.7 seconds to go, and Chanel Melton at the free throw line. And that was a great play call by the Slade, um, by the Slade Boxers, offense, uh, offensively by, uh, with the slow pick and roll by Chanel, uh, between Tatiana Diaz and Chanel Melton.
Melton misses her free throw shot. Thurber trying to come up big once again. Doesn't connect this time down low. Rebounded by Brockton. And Diaz is fouled, so she'll go to the free throw line. 19.9 seconds to go in the game. And with Diaz at the free throw line, with an opportunity to almost put the proverbial nail in the coffin. Yeah, you know, I'm pretty surprised by the outcome of this game so far, honestly, because after this first quarter, I thought this was going to be a blowout win by the Lady Boxers, but the Sabres team ended up coming back to keep this game interesting in the fourth quarter. the foul and it's the Bulldogs at the line. Casey Thurber makes her first free throw shot. That gets Sabus within one. Bulldogs with an opportunity to tie it. Casey Thurber having herself a very good fourth quarter. Crowd is into it here at Staff Gymnasium. Tie game. Sure doesn't get to her mark, does it? <laughs> Timeout called by Brockton. 11 seconds to go in the game. April Dingwell, head coach for the Brockton Lady Boxes, calls a timeout. Brockton will be inbounding from the sideline with the game tied at 55 with 11 seconds left to go when we come out of this timeout. And who knew this game would come down to really come down to the end and be such a close game? Remember, Brockton had the lead 20 to 6 at the end of the first quarter. Hey, great team always find a way to make a comeback. Melton down low, Thurber with the rebound for Sabus. Four seconds, game tied. Final shot. Oh my God! Janaea Sanchez hits the buzzer beater, and the Sabus Bulldogs come back to defeat Brockton. 58 to 55. The scoreboard reads 58-55-8, that's incorrect. 58-55, a buzzer beater by Janaea Sanchez wins it for the Sabres Bulldogs. Wow! You know, it's very, you know, that was a very, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm still shocked by this shot right now. That was a, you know, I honestly thought the Lady Boxers were gonna come out on top tonight. You know, it's, you know, very heartbreaking loss for the seniors, you know. This was gonna qualify them for the playoff, and that was their last game at home on the home field. 
It's a heartbreaking loss for the, um, for the Lady Boxers tonight. Congratulations to the Sabres team to come back in the fourth quarter and to win this game for buzzer beater shot. Hey, the juxtaposition, that's sport. The juxtaposition of happy, smiling faces of the Sabres Bulldogs walking by us during that handshake and the dejected and disappointed faces of dog, the Brockton I'm Lady Boxers <laughs> was crazy. Sabres Bulldogs assistant coach comes over and says, my dogs bite. Your final score from Sap Gymnasium, the Sabres Bulldogs improved to 20 and one as they defeat the Brockton Lady Boxers 58 to 55 due to a buzzer beater courtesy of Janaea Sanchez. Brockton falls to nine and eight. For everyone here at BCA Sports, my broadcast partner, Mark Asselon, I'm Peter Zimbor. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.